right, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. <clears throat> All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Jace Johnson, Work-Life Integration Strategist, and this is the High Performance at High Noon call. Um, and this call is for high performers that want to implement work-life integration strategies to do more of what you love. So this call is every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and I'm super excited that you are here with me today. Hello, hello. So, um, you know, I like to get started right on time. We'll welcome other folks as they come in. So we'll um, see how that goes today. But I wanted to start off with a little story today of what happened to me this morning, because it literally tied right into my topic for today. And um, and I thought it was kind of funny. <clears throat> So I, every day, am like always rushing to get my kids to school on time, okay? So I am that parent. We very rarely, um, like I make it right at the bell. So I was about to say we barely make it on time, but that's not really true. We make it on time, but like barely on time, okay? Like one minute to spare. I'm telling them to run, get in the door before they close the door, guys, right? So that's normally me. And um, so that's just... That's a, that's a thing. So then this morning, um, because I have been really working on that as a part of my commitment to not rushing in my life, I have been working on not rushing, rushing, rushing to get my kids out the door. So this morning we're going through our routine. We're getting everything done. We get out the door. I feel good about the time. One other little piece is that there is a big construction project happening on a corner. So we're always like trying to beat that traffic because the time that it would normally take us to get to school um, has been extended by a lot, like a lot, a lot because of that traffic. So I'm feeling good about the time and everything. I'm like, we're going to be in there. We're going to make it. I pull in, have the kids get out the car. And as my son is running up the hillside, running up into his door, I realize while it's snow outside that my son does not have on an actual coat. Like he got on long sleeves but no coat. So I know, you know, after going through this traffic that there is no part of my day that includes going back home, getting his coat and coming back to the school, right? I am so upset. And when I tell you like, this has never happened, right? Like this has never happened. He has never left like for school without a, a, a necessary item for school. So I'm like, what is going on right now? I'm upset. I'm yelling at him. Where's your coat? It's cars behind me. You know, they're trying to get their kids out last minute. So I'm like, okay. So I have to make a decision because I got a packed day today, but I'm also a mom. So like, is it even possible in real life for me to not have my son at school with a coat during like when it's snowing, right? You don't know how these classrooms be. You don't know about the draft. I'm like, I done double shirted him, right? I'm thinking of all the things. Like I done got the long sleeve shirt and short sleeve shirt. But is this a real thing that I can leave him at the school without a coat? I don't know if they're going outside for recess, if they staying inside. So I have to make a decision. And of course, as a mom, I go back, I drive back home, I get his coat, I drive back through the traffic, get back to the school, deliver it to um, his class. And, you know, my mom, do the, my mom, I'm momming on a hundred today. Okay. However, <laughs> it caused so much else, right? Like just that one task threw off other things that I had planned in the day, because of course there was no part of my day that had that plan. So I start with this story because it just so happens that today's topic is called gracefully accountable. And how do we extend ourselves grace and also still extend ourselves accountability, right? So in the case of my son this morning, it is not typical for my son to leave his coat. Typically speaking, I have double checked that they have on shoes, socks. They got their backpack, got their lunch box, right? Like for my son, I now have to check. I have to do an underwear check because my son, he don't like to put underwear on. So he will like put his pants on and just go. So I have to be like, look, like son, let me check. Okay, we good? Check them pants? Okay. So normally there's a little check process that happens, you know, on our way out the door. And this is not a typical situation. But this morning, for whatever reason, I don't know how I overlooked that, you know, detail. 
but I had to extend myself some grace. I had to extend myself, um, you know, the, the grace that things happen. It's not going to be perfect. I have a system in place. I have stuff, you know, in place to make sure that this is not a typical situation. I also have to be accountable to like the rest of my day. I have to be accountable to my systems, right? So somewhere in here, something slipped and that's okay. But I want to talk about being gracefully accountable because I think there is a huge like factor in what does it look like to have grace for yourself and what does it look like to make excuses for yourself? And these two things is where stuff starts to really go astray because we oftentimes will call excuses grace, right? So grace in the sense, in this sense, grace, gracefully being accountable is when you know that you have something that is set up that is designed to work a way that maybe hasn't worked that way. You have organized your calendar and something has happened. You are running a system and something didn't go right. You have intended to do something that you are typically on top of, um, or you are building up to a habit, or you are building up to a system and you are typically accountable in this space, and then something happens. How do you? not fall off, not beat yourself up, not expect, you know, yourself to be perfect, right? But also, what also can happen is you have extended yourself grace because like how many of us have that friend who'll be like, girl, don't even worry about it. You okay, right? You can't let, you can't, you know, let that be a thing. And then you have extended yourself so much grace that you actually don't go back to like doing a system. You don't go back to evaluate. So I'm going to pull back a little bit because I want to talk about some of these pieces in a little bit more detail, right? So you do have to excuse yourself because perfection is just not a thing. So um, there's a quote by Les Brown and I was trying to find it. I don't know if it's a quote, if they actually like quoted it or if he just said it one day, but Les Brown was telling a story and he was talking about, um, you know, the concept of perfection and like how many people think that practice makes, you know, perfect, right? So of course people were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, wrong, practice makes progress. So I want us to be able to think about that, we have to extend ourselves some grace in the in the fact that we are not going to be, we will not be perfect. So we are going to slip up. We are going to miss something. Something is going to drop. A ball is going to, you know, a ball is going to be dropped. Something is not going to happen right um, often. We have to continue to practice what it is that we want to see progress in or ideally what we want to perfect with with the understanding that perfection just is not it's not it's not a thing like you can you can do something perfectly one time but you will not be perfect. So I think most of the time we get that. Like up here mentally we understand that perfection is not a real thing in like how we live our day to day to day lives but many of us actually still struggle with the concept of perfection so when we can't roll something out the way that we want to when we can't execute on something the way that we want to we go back to it's not done right it's not finished it's not completed it's not perfect right so we have to be able to balance those things out it's not always going to be perfect, but we're not really seeking perfection. We're actually really seeking progress. And as long as we can keep that in the forefront of our minds, that it is around progression, it is not around perfection. That allows us not just in the case of like something that I laid out with my son, but it allows us in business. It allows us in our careers to start taking some of those risks that we need to take in order for us to move everything forward, because I'm not expecting perfection out of myself. If you guys have, um, you know, been around, like I started this call back in October, right? I do little switches and changes here and there as I continue to work on the call and continue to work on, you know, how to perfect the call, right? Even with the understanding that it's never going to be perfect, it is going to continue to progress. So when we think about that, you know, keep that one thing in, my, in mind, right? Um, and and one of the, the things that has always resonated with me that I hear from a lot of not just high performers, but also from my coaches is that a person who hasn't made a mistake hasn't done anything because you're not taking any risks. So how do we allow ourselves to take risks knowing that we're going to make some mistakes and then give ourselves grace inside of those mistakes? So this isn't about feeling bad and it's not about feeling guilty. It is about the continuous progress, but also how do we then keep in mind about accountability, right? 
So when we do make a mistake, because we will make a mistake, hopefully I have drilled that part in, right? We will make a mistake. When we do, how do we go back and assess what happened and be able to look at it objectively so that we don't attach that mistake, that missed mark, that missed target, that dropped ball, right? How do we not attach that to ourselves and internalize that situation? Because that's when I hear people like, oh, I always do this. I never make it, you know, um, one of the things that I struggled with a lot was being on time, right? So being on time has been a consistent factor for me for a long time. It wasn't before. When I was in the military, I never had an issue being on time. Since leaving the military and having kids, I have had people literally tell me, oh, well, I just expected you to be late. So whatever came after that, I almost didn't even hear because I'm sorry, you just expected me to be late. I started to attach that, that lack of accountability and being someplace on time. I started to attach that to who I was. Oh, I just show up late. That's not who I am. That's not how I want to show up. However, there are times or things that may occur where I may not show up on time. How do I consistently get better in showing up on time, being prepared without attaching that thing to myself? So giving myself grace in the moment, but also holding myself accountable to needing to be somewhere or doing something on time, right? So um, we have to really be objective because honestly, one of the things that I've learned, especially in the space of coaching and working with businesses, business owners, more specifically working with the business owners and working with a lot of professionals is that we struggle. We really struggle to get criticism without attaching it to our person. So we will have people that have told us something that we haven't done right, given us feedback on a thing that we have done, but we don't like to hear it. It hurts to hear. It hurts to hear that something that we have done hasn't come out right or that we dropped the ball somewhere. It is bothersome when someone addresses us in a confrontational way, even when we were wrong, right? So, and we hear ourselves make them that excuse. Well, I mean, I know I didn't submit it on time, but right, because we don't like the feedback in the way that somebody gave us that feedback without just being able to be accountable to the feedback. You know what? You're right. I didn't do that. So if we're not able to go back and actually make an assessment of what happened, how do we actually course correct? Because course correction is super important as we think about progress, right? So you have to, like in the space of giving yourself grace, you have to be open to how do you make the course correction? And in some cases, you won't have to. Like like I mentioned today with my son, my son doesn't typically go to school without his jacket. That's not necessarily a thing. So when I go back and I think through, okay, well, what happened today that this happened, you know, that this occurred, I sat back and I thought about it for a second. Well, normally my car is parked in the garage. Normally when it's parked in the garage and I tell them to go get in the car, they are coming out with me and I see them as we're all getting into the car as we're backing out the garage. Well, today my car was parked in the driveway. It was not inside of the garage. So when I told them to go get in the car, my son ran to go get in the car before I got to check him. My daughter needed a little bit of help. So I helped her get, get her uh, her shoes on properly. And then she ran out into the car. So I saw her. My son was already sitting in his seat buckled up by the time we got in the car. It just wasn't a thought in the way that it typically rolls out. So therefore, an untypical um, or an atypical, you know, result happened, right? So I, one, I can assess it um, because it threw my day off. But two, I don't have to be offended by the situation, right? I can just assess it and realize that this was a mishap and there's no adjustment that actually needs to be made. But sometimes there are adjustments that need to be made. So we have to account for traffic on the way to the school now. So instead of us leaving at our normal time, we have to leave earlier, which means our whole morning schedule has to be adjusted in order to leave earlier in order to get there on time. So sometime like the first couple of days when, this when they blocked off these roads, I was late 
after that, I have to be accountable that it's not okay to show up late. I know there's a traffic block. So I got to make an adjustment. I can't give myself any more grace <laughs> for being late to get them to school because I know the traffic block exists. I have to adjust. So if I don't give myself the room to assess what happened and give and allow myself to be objective without feeling like this criticism is attached to who I am, oh my God, I'm a horrible mom. I didn't make get my kids to school on time, not once, but twice, but three times. You know, how do I then make that adjustment for myself, right? So we can't be afraid of the criticism. We have to be open to feedback. We don't even have to love how the feedback was given. Y'all heard the phrase, don't throw up the baby with the bathwater. When somebody give you feedback in a way that did not go to your liking, that's okay. That is okay. Like you can assert yourself. I mean, don't let nobody just sit over here and be crazy rude to you, right? But the reality is if that person giving feedback is accurate and you just didn't like the delivery, you got to be big enough. You got to pull your big boy britches up and pull your big girl panties up and be like, okay, I heard you. I didn't like how you said it, but let me make the adjustment. And so often our pride and our ego and our, her, our ego, our ego gets in the way because we don't like how something was said to us despite its validity despite it being true. So we don't even allow ourselves the grace to get better in something because we couldn't even accept the feedback that we weren't good at something that we knew we weren't good at in the first place. Like you knew when you messed up. So I want you to remember that you can have both grace and also be accountable. And in that, the one person that you should be getting rid of, you should be getting rid of the people who allow you to continue to live in mediocrity unchecked. Because we all got them people in our lives who just always tell us, oh, that's okay. Don't even worry about it. You shouldn't even be worried about that. Why are you worried about what they said? They said that rude to you? Girl, I wouldn't even be worried about them. And you you got people who will enable you to la to stay in a place of a lack of accountability. They You will just be enabled in that way because you will keep people around you that enable you in that way. Is this helpful so far? Let me know if this is helpful. Um, so I want you to write this down. We're going to talk about some accountability pieces. I got three, four things. I can't count. I got four things um, that I want you to think about in terms of accountability specifically, right? Because I think sometimes we get the grace part. Like we get don't beat ourselves up, right? You make a mistake and you ain't here to beat yourself up. We get that part. But then it's getting back on the accountability because it is very easy very easy for you to show yourself so much grace that you never get back to the habit, right? Like you are you are being accountable to a goal. You are, you are creating a habit. You have a routine. You have a system. You have a thing that you are supposed, an objective, a target that you are supposed to be meeting. And when you don't meet it, it's cool, but you got to get back on. So I'll give you another quick story about the gym, right? And this is going to tie into one of the points I want you to write down, but I'll give you a, an accountability story about the gym. So I struggle to get to the gym on Fridays. My three days that I'm supposed to go to the gym five days a week, I, typically four days a week, no problem. The fifth day, I oftentimes struggle because I have a routine. In my routine, I leave home at a certain time. I go to pick up my kids from school and then I go straight to the gym before I go back home. So we could talk about the formation of habits on another day, but just understand that habits form through a cue. There's a trigger. The trigger is I went to go pick up my kids. On Fridays, my kids get picked up by their father. So on Friday, that, that cue that normally sends me to the gym, I have gotten dressed, left the house, picked up my kids, swooped around to the gym, swoop around back home, back home, right? That cue doesn't happen on Fridays. So oftentimes on Fridays, I never get up from my desk. I would just be sitting here working, working, working. Before I know it, I look up because the alarm that goes off on my phone that says time to go get dressed and go pick up your kids, it never goes off on Friday. So, so on Friday, it's I, I do get in there. But oftentimes, a later time than I expected to, not the time that I put in my calendar, definitely not the time that I get into the gym Monday through Thursday, right? 
So when I get to the gym, uh, um, I'm sorry, last Friday, I didn't make it to the gym. So I said, okay, that's fine. I'm going to make it up because I don't require myself to work out on the weekends. So I have a little bit of grace because if I don't work out on Friday, I can work out on Saturday, Sunday. So I never go to the gym on Sunday. Technically, I have that day open for me to go. So here I go planning, I'm gonna go to the gym on Sunday. By the time I get to the gym on Sunday, the gym is closed. I didn't even know what time it closed on Sunday. So I was ready to go. I have my gym clothes on. I got my water bottle. I'm ready to go to the gym. I am literally walking in and people are walking back out. And I was like, oh, okay. I look at the door. Oh, okay. So I can't go to the gym. So I show myself some grace. I had every intention to make it there. I understood what happened. I came prepared. I didn't check the time. Didn't even think I needed to check the time. So cool. So I show some self, myself some grace. I did not make my gym time. One, I had a plan B. But two, on Monday, I was very intentional to get back into the gym immediately on Monday. Not only did I go to the gym on Monday, I did the double workout. I did my Monday workout and I did my Friday workout or a Sunday workout at this point, right? Because when I show myself grace, it doesn't mean that I can forget the habit. And so often we will excuse ourselves from doing something and then never come back to it. So when we look back up and we are a month down the line, two months down the line, three months down the line from a target we set that we never came back to, it was because the one time that you messed up, the one time you didn't follow through, the one time you skipped it, you ain't never came back. You ain't never came back. You just kept right on going all the way through and forgot about it. It didn't fell off your radar. So I want you to write these things down. We're going to talk about four ways to be accountable. So one, set smaller goals. So when you're looking at accountability, if you set a goal that's too high and you struggle to meet it and you fall off that, that track, you show yourself some grace if you come back and you find that you were doing this over and over and over again, right, you've got to set a smaller goal. So when you're thinking about the place of accountability and you're thinking about the targets that you set, you got to be able to ask yourself, did I fall off this one time and there's not really many adjustments I need to make? Or when, I, when I've taken the time to go back and assess what happened, I noticed that this is a thing I'm very inconsistent in. How do I break it down so that I can build consistency little by little by little? Because sometimes we be trying to come in and we about to, you know, we knew we didn't have the year we wanted to have, the month we wanted to have, the week we wanted to have. We about to do a full scale overhaul. Everything about to change. And you do that for one day and then everything fall off, right? Like it's not possible. It's not possible. So when we recognize this, just live in the fact that you may have to make smaller changes and build up to what it is that you want to do. When I first, I had somebody ask me this um, on a post that I had put about my kids, right? So I was talking about being present for my children and we had gone to the aquarium and I was just fully present. I said, even the pictures, I took enough pictures to like mark the moment, but I had my phone put away often. So I, I missed some cute little memories that are just here in my mind because my phone was tucked away. And I had my phone tucked away because when I'm, when I got my phone in my hand, it's very easy for me to start checking social media, start checking email, start checking text messages. And my goal was to be present for the kids. So that was a place that I had to work up to. So when the question was asked, like he said, I really struggle with being present for the kids because I'm always thinking about the impact that I want to make at work. And I said, well, you also want to make an impact with your kids, right? So I had to do this in increments. Like for me to be able to take three, four, five hours of time without my phone in order to be fully present with my kids required me to start with 30 minutes. I, I had to time myself 30 minutes you're about to put the timer on the clock, on the on the um, microwave, 30 minute timer on the microwave so that I can put my phone away 
and not even use my phone as the alarm system. My phone needed to be away so that I could be dialed in with my kids. Now I can spend a day with my kids and not have to worry about my phone. But that took time. So when you're thinking about setting smaller goals, it's not that you're not trying to get to your target, but what might be an easier bite to chew so that you can build the habit and then you start to build that habit into a place where you could be accountable. So now if I tell my kids I'm focused on them and my kids catch me on the phone, they will call me out, my seven-year-old especially that girl don't play she'd be like um you are not present with this oh excuse me ma'am let me <laughs> you are so right <laughs> i'm not present so i can i can let that feedback from the seven-year-old hold me accountable to when i have agreed to be present so thing number two write this down preparation is key so if you are thinking about how do you stay on a, on your accountability mark often is to be prepared. So if it is to go to the gym, that means that you need to have your workout clothes pulled out. If it is to, you know, eat right, that means that you need to throw away, don't eat all, don't eat all the rest of the snacks, throw away all the rest of the <laughs> all the rest of the snacks all the rest of the processed snacks right don't do it to yourself because <laughs> i've been there right like well you know i'm gonna eat these first so i don't want to waste nothing no, just throw it away you've already decided it ain't good for you <laughs> right but like how do you then make sure that you have put you know you've prepped for healthy snacks to be at you know at the ready or or easily accessible right so same thing like you know when i'm getting ready to sit down and do a project i try to close out all my other screens the only screens i have open are this is this for this project i have all the tools i need around me i'm about to sit down and do this so when it's time to pay bills i have all my bills pulled out i got my calculator pulled out i got the cards i'm finna pay with it pulled out and i can do, be doing this thing when we when we hold ourselves accountable in that space, right? I mean, when we prepare, rather, it's easy to hold ourselves accountable in that space. So th here's three thing number three. This one is really important. So pay attention. Hopefully, hopefully you are here with me. Pay attention to this. Build trust with yourself. That is an accountability piece. How many of you work off your calendar? I work off my calendar. If it's not in my calendar, it don't exist, right? So I have to have everything in my calendar. How many of you have a meeting with someone else, an appointment with someone else that goes in your calendar and you hold to that meeting? Most of us do that, right? I scheduled this meeting, this appointment. I have to physically be there. I have someone else that's expecting me to be there. I have someone else who's going to be the other side of that call. So it goes in my calendar and I show it. How many of you have put something in your calendar that is just for you? That when your calendar goes off, you do not honor that thing. I just told y'all that with the gym. On Friday, the gym is sitting in my calendar the same time that it is every other day. But it can go, my literally the calendar can go off and I won't even stop because I don't have to pick up my kids. I don't have a reason. I don't have anybody that is making me get up and get out of my house at that time. So often I make it there. I'll make it there later, but I don't honor that block in my calendar. But how many other blocks don't we honor? How many of you have put a self-care block in your calendar? Like this day, I'm about to do this for myself and we don't honor it. How many of us have put a block in there? Like I'm going to spend time with so-and-so and we call and cancel or we don't honor it at all. I'll tell you another one for me that I really had to cut out doing. I have an aunt, she's 90 years old, 91, I think. So um, I have a block in my calendar to call her once a month. She also has, um, early stages of dementia and she has Alzheimer's. So her and I can have the same conversation about six, seven times in a 10, 15 minute block. If I don't call her, she will not miss my call. She will not even remember that I called her when I called her, when I call her. But it's important to me, for me to stay in touch with her. She doesn't live in the state with me. So I don't get to see her often. I know that she's nearing, you know, towards that end of time. And I want to, I enjoy the story she tells me, even if she tells me the same story two, three times, right? I love her to life. 
But because I know she won't remember when I call, sometimes I let that block go right on by and I don't call her. Next thing I know, I'd have missed two or three months and I haven't checked in with her. Now she don't remember. When I call her, she'd be talking like my son is two, my son is five. She don't remember. But it's still important because I put it in my schedule in order for me to do that and be intentional about staying in touch with her. If it's no longer important to me, I need to remove it out of my schedule. But I break trust with myself if I don't honor that block. So when I put the block of time to call her, I had to hold myself accountable to calling her, not because she's going to remember, but because I deemed it important enough to put it in my calendar. And I made the commitment that I was going to call her every month. So what things do you break commitment to yourself on? You put time in your calendar to read. You put time in your calendar to work on professional development. You put time in your calendar to, to take that, you know, master class that you're going to catch the replay on. And then somewhere in here, you don't get to it. No one knows. Only you know. No one knows. But how often do you break trust with yourself? Because when you break trust with you, that's why you struggle to reach your goals. Because you don't even trust yourself when you set them. You know why you don't trust yourself when you set them? Because you know how many times you told yourself you were going to do something. Nobody else knows that you said you were going to do it, but you still didn't do it. You break trust with yourself. So the last one, I'll leave you with this and I'll open up for any comments, questions, is create a plan B. So we talked about this because you can definitely catch that replay for plan B, but we talked about this. Create a plan B. When all else fails, create a plan B. So going back to that Sunday, no, I didn't get in my workout fully, but I have a plan B workout. It's a 2020. I have a plan B workout. It takes me a couple of minutes just to keep the habit. And then Monday, I came back and I held myself accountable to that workout, the full workout. So how do you create a plan B in order to make sure that if you can't do what you plan to do, that you have a fallback? Let you have a fallback in order for you to keep the habit, in order for you to keep the consistency. Because a plan B is also giving yourself grace. I can't do this, but in the meantime, I'm going to make sure I do this. So I hope that you found that helpful today. Um, I'm about to open up. My homework for you is um, for you to think about one area that you've broken a promise to yourself and fix it. Go back and hold yourself accountable. Where have you broken trust with yourself? That's your homework. So um, I'm about to open up for any questions, any comments. Um, before I do, I want to remind you that if you are interested in learning more about the um, Excuse Me While I Live Intentionally program, you can go ahead and get in contact with me um, and I will be happy to connect with you and learn and find out um, you know, more about your needs and if this program around um, work-life um, integration strategies and intentional living, if this is a program that will fit what you're needing, um, you know, if you are feeling stressed out, overworked, overworked, overwhelmed, if you are feeling, generally speaking, unfulfilled and you were just trying to figure out what do you need to do to get back on track, this may be a program for you and I would love to con connect with you and find out more about what you're going through and how I can help. So, all right, y'all, what we got? We got questions, we got comments, we got feedback. How was today's call? Did this help? Everybody good? Everybody still on mute? Okay. Well, we, oh, awesome. Great call. Okay, cool. Well, we don't have any comments. We don't have any questions. I will let y'all get back to your day. I just want to thank you all for joining me for today's high. Uh, high performance at high noon call. Um, again, this calls every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, and 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So meet me back here next week on Wednesday. I got a fabulous topic that I'm really excited to dig into um, for us next week. All right. All right, y'all.